So Aunt Marvel, when we finished our last discussion, I learned that you graduated high school in 1961. And I know that the Brown versus Board Supreme Court decision to integrate schools happened and you know, that's 1954. And so a full seven years later in Houston County, the schools are still segregated. What's up with that? Like what, what was going on at the time? What do you remember about what people were saying at the time about school integration? Well, all I knew, Robin, was that the whites really didn't want to integrate. They yes, wanted to keep it segregated so they could run things like they had been running them. And that uh, the blacks wouldn't get advantage of what the government was given them because whatever they gave for the black school, we didn't get it. It stopped at the white school. Well, and right, money. We would get the leftover maybe of something, but we never got exactly what should have been ours. Yes, ma'am. So to be clear, our family worked, we served in the military, we paid taxes. Mm -hmm. um, Aunt Mava, I've traced our family history and I have gone as far, I, I don't wanna be wrong, but I have found our enslaved ancestors all the way back to the 1820s. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so, you know, we are here, we build the country, we serve yes. in the military post, um, you know, post reconstruction, uh, you know, even mama did and daddy rip actually vote. They pay yes. their poll tax. And right. they vote. I, I think that that is an incredible act of bravery. Yes. Um, and the black schools do the very best that they can on a shoestring budget and right. literally with secondhand torn up books. Yes. Um, and so that bit of history, like I said, I actually was, I, I didn't, I didn't realize that, you know, I thought that our family, maybe because we were from a largely African American community that maybe the school that we went to was just largely African-American. That phenomenon happens today. You know, yes. I reside in Houston and, you know, depending on what town, what side of town you're on, you know, the demographic of the school is going to reflect whoever is in the community and who's zoned to that school. But that wasn't necessarily so back in the day in Houston County. Right. There were, there were entities and powerful people uh, who decided to slow walk integration yes. of the schools and really sharing that education budget. Because yes. let's be honest, that's what it comes down to. Is right, money. right. You know, yeah. They they didn't want to share money and advan advantages and privileges, right, you know, with and, the African American students. See, for us, Robin, out at Kenor, they didn't even want to share the food. Because oh, wow. I know the get government gave more than beans, but beans yes, were just about what we had to eat every day, you know. Oh, wow. Although they were filling and everybody at lunchtime was happy to get beans. But, yeah. uh, you know, I just know that if the food wasn't distributed, like it should have been because yes, I know they wouldn't have sent just our school beans every day. Yes, ma'am. That is Pinto interesting. beans. Yes. That is interesting. I had never considered that, Aunt Mava. Yes. I really had never thought about that. Yes. Wow. Well, the food wasn't shared equally. No. Mm. Well, so... so See, we never knew really what we were going to get or uh, what we got from the government. 
because we didn't ever get anything. And if we did get it, it had been through the white kids' hands and it was torn up, you know. So, yeah, uh, they did that, I guess, kind of like they did uh, the when the Emancipation Proclamation came out. You know, just slow walk. It. Yeah, just slow yeah, walk. Just it, keep you know? it as long as you can. You know, so wow. when they did integrate, it was done because the government required it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, about what time do you think that this is happening in Houston County? That was, that was in the late sixties. Okay. Uh, probably your dad would remember better than I do, but probably okay. 67, 68, somewhere like okay. that. Uh -huh. Okay. Yes. So you are, you are in an all black school. Um, my right. father is actually pretty proud of the education that he received in Kennard Colored School. Uh, yes. He puts Fessor Henry, not Professor oh, yeah. Henry. Oh, yeah. Fessor. Fessor. My dad puts <laughs> Fessor Henry on a high pedestal. You know, yes. he says that that man was highly educated. He Brilliant. took care of his students. Yes. Well, and, and daddy says even that the student test scores uh, were reflective of very good education and that sometimes the test scores at the black school were superior or higher than the scores uh, that were achieved at the white schools where we, uh -huh, you know, were not allowed to go. Okay, yes. well, and so um, daddy also talks about like uh, extracurricular activities. There actually weren't a whole lot no. of extracurricular activities at right. the public school. Uh, but he says that the basketball team that played on a dirt, you know, yeah, a little I dirt plot, think, yeah, actually went to state. Yeah, you know, um, yes. and I, I think that's an incredible accomplishment. He says they didn't even have. I don't know if they had backboards or if they just didn't have a special type of backboard. But when you talk about shoestring and not having anything at Mava, you know, what is described to me uh, uh, is that the community really did make a whole lot of something out of nothing. Yes. Um, and I keep saying, like, that's that true. The community produced so many diamonds, you know, yes. there are rough times for sure. And I don't mean to romanticize those rough times, but really just want to highlight the ingenuity of our family. Yes. You know, like, right. you know, that, like that brilliance and genius didn't happen somewhere outside, you know, our little community and our family. Yes. We, we figured out how to overcome right. you know, those obstacles. I'm, I am in awe of that. That is um, true. Aunt Mava, what else can you tell me about the time and what you remember about the civil rights movement? When do you have some awareness of, you know, Thurgood Marshall and Dr. King and, you know, the, the bus boycott? Yeah. And Selma and, you know, all of these things like, you know, tell me what you remember about the time. Well, what I can remember is uh, during that time of Thurgood Marshall, I believe I was going to Texas College mm -hmm. and uh, we didn't have televisions in our rooms, but we did have radios. So I listened to the news a lot. Mm -hmm. And you would hear about different things that was going on with the movement that they were busing buses of people from New York to Alabama, you know, to march and right. sit-ins. 
at that time they did sit-ins because if we went in a store, you know, we were still second class. You couldn't go to the to, to the counter to order anything and sit down and eat in the stores you had if you got anything i guess they give it to you and you would have to leave you know and so the, is this happening to you when you're in tyler like these are the rules of society well know, not, in the early 60s when you go to texas college uh robin we didn't go anywhere <laughs> it uh when we were there in tyler you know, again, that was, you know, we were in the black part of town, and one man, uh, Mr. Moon, had a store that we could go to. It wasn't far from the campus. We would uh, have to walk to it, but it wasn't very far. And that's where we would do our little buying, you know, when you get your little uh spending money yeah. <laughs> during the month. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but uh as far as town, you we didn't go to town every day. Now when I got to be I guess maybe a junior or senior, then sometime we would have to go to town. But see, uh, the segregation then had happened at that time. So I don't know how they enforced the laws, but I'm sure it's a southern town. So I'm sure it was like all the other little southern places. You know, you had certain places to stand and all of that to get whatever you would want. Well, you know, Aunt Mava, I find it interesting, you know, these days, a young person going to an HBCU, you know, um, a young person going to Texas College or Prairie View A&M University, they're free to move around. Right. You know? I mean, right. I remember being a freshman at Prairie View and thinking I was hot stuff you know going <laughs> yeah. going to Hempstead you know or yeah. going to like Waller yeah. Wall. you know there was no place I couldn't go yeah. you know there was yeah. there was no limit to to where I could go when I was enrolled at college now yes. of course you know they try to keep you out of trouble and in all of that um, right. but you know that I didn't have a you know a curfew and I didn't I wasn't told that there was somewhere I couldn't go yeah. What you are describing to me sounds a lot like how you were raised in Tadmo. Right. Really, y'all didn't go to town a lot. Right. That's you, true. I, I mean, and it sounds, again, to me, and I could be interpreting this very wrong, but to me, it's as if the black leader infrastructure at Texas College yes. was a lot like the black leader infrastructure right. in Tad home. They wanted to protect y'all and true. insulate you That's true. from all of that hate and negativity. Yes. Um, and really, I'm not going to lie, on some level, they probably wanted to protect some of y'all from getting caught up in the civil rights movement. My dad. I can That's imagine true. being a parent you know, I can imagine being a parent of Marva Anglin, gone to Tyler, yeah. you know, and, you know, Marva maybe being a little bit upset about, you know, what's going on um, in society and Blacks not being able to move freely in society, uh -huh. you know, despite everything that we have done and contributed to society and to culture and paying tax, like, you know, I, right. I can run down the list, Aunt Mava. Right. Um, and I can imagine being a parent and saying to my child at the time, you better not go to one protest. Yeah. You better not get on a freedom ride. Uh -huh. You know, I have not worked so hard <laughs> yeah. for you to get in trouble and go to jail. You right. know, um, I would imagine that that was probably a parent's worst nightmare. Yes. Um, and so I'm saying the leadership infrastructure at Texas College perhaps had an agenda 
yeah. of trying to keep the students out of trouble and really keep Texas College out of trouble. Right. Um, I'm, I'm sure you are right. Yes. I w- well, I don't know, you know, but it, it makes sense right. to me that that's probably the when issue you, uh, there. look at it, yes, I think you are right. Uh, because they were something like your parents, you know. Yeah. And if you went different places, you had to get, if you went, you had to get permission. So, yeah. you know, if somebody left and they didn't right. get permission, they were right, doing wrong. Aunt Mama. You know? Right. Yes. They knew when you were coming and going. Yes. They were looking out for you, you yes. know, because they didn't want to have to explain to your parents. Right. What you know, happened? How, what happened? Yeah. Yeah. If you got caught up. It's something. So yeah. It, they, it, there's insulation there. Um, and it worked. I mean, you know, you actually, you, you didn't get, well, actually, I'm going to let you speak for yourself, Aunt Mava. Were you ever involved in any of the protests that, that you know, I heard of uh, Southern Christian Leadership Conference and um, was there like a SNCC, um, you know, Black Panthers come behind that. There's a lot of yes. um, organizations, you know, there's NAACP. Now we're, yes. we're members of the CME Church and I actually need to read up on CME Church activism during the time. Um, but what do you, do you recall any kind of participation in any organization that spoke out against you no. know, oppression or hate or anything like that? No, because I don't think they had anything like that at Texas. It College. wasn't even on campus. See, what about black history? Like, did you, was it, you're at an HBCU. Was there any black history lesson there? Uh, let me see. Black history. Because I'm told I'm, that I'm Prairie sure View. I'm sure it was, Robin. Okay. I'm sure it was uh, at that time when I was there. Okay. I was trying to remember, though, uh, was it at Texas College when I took a class of black history? I guess it might have been. Uh, so, because, you know, a lot of times in history, the teacher, especially if he was black, would kind of relate things that went on, you know, in certain times of uh, that of history, you know. Uh, They would relate, if you were talking maybe about uh, inventing something, let's say the the spinning wheel or something, uh, they, if anything, that they knew about black history, they would relate it. So, yeah. Okay. I'm sure. Well, that, you know, that's a beautiful thing. I had heard that back in the day, for instance, at Prairie View, and, you know, I can't help but talk about Prairie View a lot yes. because it's near and dear to my heart. Um, right. You know, I'm from a Prairie View family. We got yes. purple and gold wreaths around the house. <laughs> yeah. that, you know, we, yes. we, you know, we, we're, we're Panthers here, but um, a long time ago, there I had heard that there wasn't even like a Black History course, um, and even you know the the concept of African American studies as a major in college is more contemporary to me. You know, I don't I don't believe that that major existed as a focus of study. Um, mm-hmm. You know, back then. You know, it you know, probably, let's say like in the seventies or you know in the eighties. Yeah, even. I I don't know. Um, but now, um, uh, I, young students uh, of any cultural pers- persuasion can choose to focus on African American studies as a major um, in many of the larger universities here. Um, yeah. And so I'm just you know, times were different when you were when you were in college. What else do you remember about being in college? You know, back in the day, it was said, and I could be wrong. Set me straight if I'm wrong, Aunt Mava. I am told that a lot of young women went to college to find a husband. That was the point. 
go go to college, <laughs> yeah. find you somebody and get married to a college boy. Yeah. Um, you know, but what do you recall about that time? Like, you know, was that true or were women really seeking, you know, better economic opportunities for themselves? Well, no, I, I think when I went, women was just really trying to get an education to better themselves. I did never hear any of them say, oh, I came so I could meet a husband, you know. <laughs> but now, I did hear that when I was uh, working on my master's degree at Stephen F. Austin. I was in the bathroom one day, and some women were in there of the opposite race, and they were saying, you know, one was saying, well, that was why, that was what she was told. Go to college and, and get you a husband, a you know, mm -hmm. so you can uh, better your finance and all. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. But now, I never heard that at Texas College. Okay. Well, like or, or and even thing. from your family, that your family no, didn't send you to school. my family never said it. Uh -uh. Okay. <laughs> they wanted me to go so I could support myself, you yeah, know. Yeah. And yeah. wouldn't have to depend on somebody else. Same. So, yeah. Well, same, Aunt Marva. That's the message that I received from my yes. family. Yes. You get your education so you can help you, you know. Uh-uh. Okay. Yes. So, Aunt Marva. So, yes. Aunt Mava, tell me, um, what what did you what was your college major? You know, when did you finish? And then you said, you know, you went on to get a master's. Tell me about your education. Right, I uh, went to Texas College, and I got a major in elementary education, and I got my master's in elementary education. I went in 61 and got out in 65. I think that's four years. Uh, so, and after, when I finished, I came back to Tatma and I worked at Kennard, I think, for two years. And I worked in uh, remedial reading for two years and that third year I went to Tomball and I worked at uh, Huff Smith for a year I think and I taught seventh and eighth grade okay now wait a minute I'm I'm losing track so did you get your undergrad and and a master's from Texas College, or you did undergrad at Texas College and then mastered at, at Stephen Prairie F. Austin? At oh, Prairie masters View. at Prairie View. Uh huh. Yeah, oh. but I oh. did take some uh, master classes at Stephen F. Austin. Okay, but, that's really cool. But what happened was. Aunt Ollie told me about a program that was going on at Prayer Review, mm -hmm. and it was a teacher, oh my, what was the was name it? of it? Teacher Teach for something. America or something? Uh, I can't think of the name now, but it was Teacher Something, Robert, and we could go and get a master's, but we would have to go to uh, underprivileged areas in Texas and work for so many, for two years, I believe it was. And okay. you would work at a school district, but uh, once a week we had to go to prayer review for classes. Okay. And we did that for two years, I believe it was. Okay. And at the end of the two-year program, we would be able to get a, obtain a master's degree. Wow. So that's what I did. So. I, and Ali was a team leader in doing this program. 
teacher, teacher core, I believe. No, it wasn't teacher core, I don't think. I I can't remember the name. But anyway. I will find out. And I'm so glad that. Team leaders, you know, uh, because there were about, I guess, seven, uh, eight to ten groups. And all the groups, there was a group from Bastrop. There was a group from Lexington. There was a group from uh, Grosbeck, a group from Mission. And I can't remember, but it was some more. And they selected so many of us. I can't remember if it was eight to ten in a group or what. But anyway, you would choose the group you wanted to work with. And you went there and you would teach, uh, help the teachers, you know, teach or uh, you might, they might want you to tutor. So when I I chose Grosbeck because Grosbeck was the closest thing for me to be at home, to come home on the weekend. Okay. So I chose Grosbeck and and, uh, the others, we would all come together at prayer review. Let's, let me see. That was a, a group from Cypress Fairbanks, too. And uh, I can't remember all of them. But anyway. But that has a big that impact. For, huh? I, I, in my mind, I'm thinking that has big impact. Here's what's showing up for me. And yes. Ali is an incredibly humble woman. She does not brag about herself. You know, she doesn't no. talk about her accomplishments. That matter of fact, she'll look at a Mitty and say, Mitty may you tell her, you know. <laughs> uh, but I, I think I think that's really cool that Aunt so you know, Daddy Rip worked to get Aunt Ollie and Aunt Mitty through college. They did yes. that. You know, and then they reach behind and they pull you and your siblings up, you know, yeah. to college. And and then after that, reach and say, hey, come get in this master's program. Uh-huh. And and Ollie is one of the team leaders yeah. of this teaching program. That's incredible. Yeah, because she already had her master's. Yeah. Yeah. So she well, she already team. had her master's. Uh-huh. And, I mean, just to put a finer point on it. You know, they talk about, you know, you're talking about true Jim Crow South, you know, one, a few times in their childhood, they are picking peas and picking cotton in the fields, you know, they grow up in largely segregated, you know, Jim Crow South colored schools, you know, um, with the love of their family, but maybe with not a whole lot of like economic wins, if you will, but they went to college, they go on to get a master's degree. And when I was growing up, I'll be honest, I thought they were rich, you know, and I yeah. and Aunt Mitty seemed to be doing very well. You know, <laughs> yeah. you know they, yeah. they drove nice cars, they yeah. had nice homes, yes. you know, they were just, they were, <laughs> they were fancy ladies. Um, and I think that that's beautiful, you know, considering, I mean, I, I know, I know what, I know what the first home looked like, you know, yes. um, like, so thinking of the arc, just like the journey, how we went from there to, you know, where Aunt Ollie and Aunt Mitty are lifting us to, I just yes. I think is, um, uh, it's beautiful. It so is. you, uh, you taught in Tomball for a little bit, um, yes. and then you go to teach in Grosbeck. Okay. Yes. Okay. And you have a master's degree from Prairie View. Yeah. Um. And so, what happens after you get um your master's, Aunt Mava? I guess you know. Talk to me about your career. Uh, after I got my master's, uh, they asked me to continue working in Grosbeck. So, okay. 
I worked in Grosbeck for 24 years. Wait and a minute. Did I know that? I don't know. I, I, I don't always thought that you, you know, Aunt Mama, my whole life, I think you've lived in Mejia. Um, and well, I, I, I lived just in assumed... Grosbeck first. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. okay. I lived in Grosbeck first. Okay. And uh, later, I moved to Mejia. Okay. Uh huh. And I stayed with a friend of mine that I met after I went to Grosbeck. She lived in Mahaya. And uh, I was living in Grosbeck. And I, this was about 69. And she lost her mother that year from, okay. uh, with cancer. Okay. And nobody was at home left but she and her father. And her father worked at night in the VA hospital in Waco. So Mrs. Killian asked me if I would stay with Dorothy so she wouldn't be at home at night by herself. Okay. So I had stayed in Grosbeck, oh, I guess uh, a year or two. And then I moved with Dorothy. Okay. So I stayed with she and her father. Yes. Wow. Uh -huh. I did not know that. Okay. <laughs> And yes. so taught for about 24 years in Grosbeck and, um, it, you know, is that where your teaching career ended? Did you teach No, after okay. I taught 24 years in Grosbeck, I moved to Maha uh moved, started teaching in Mahaya. Okay. Uh-huh. Okay. So. And what was your focus during your, were you mostly elementary ed education? Yes. Yes. Okay. Mostly elementary education. The only time I wasn't, I didn't do elementary was when I went to Tomball and I taught seventh and eighth grade at that Tomball. That sounds terrible. Oh my <laughs> God. I, look, I, you know, I give yeah. teachers all the respect, <laughs> all the flowers. You know, I come from a family full of teachers and I also knew there was no way there was no way I was ever going to be anybody's teacher. Yes. <laughs> Just not built like that. Uh, oh, Y'all. I don't think even the offspring wanted to be teacher. No. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. You know, even looking at y'all, y'all had the whole summer off, all the breaks off. Yes. Um, you know, that teacher pension is, is something to work for, you know, it's, that's nice. Yeah. Uh, but no, no, uh, no, <laughs> you Ooh. know, these, these children, uh, they will test you seventh and eighth grade is kind of rough. You that know, the younger true. ones, they still kind of want, they want love. Right. Know, they love giving hugs. Yeah. 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 That's true. Okay. Yes. Well, um, Aunt Mava, you have an incredible legacy. About how many years did you teach before you decided to retire? 40. I wow. taught 40 years before. And then after 40, I retired. Wow, Aunt Mava. Yes. My goodness. <laughs> that is a long time. It is. It is. But I yeah. enjoyed it, you know. Yeah. You yeah, you yeah. enjoy. It. Yeah. They just don't pay anything, but you you do enjoy the work, you know. Right. And right. especially when you are working with kids. But see, uh there towards the end, they put so much paperwork on you. Ooh, you had so much paperwork you had to do. And then you had to teach and grade papers. So yeah. it 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 became kind of hard, you know. Okay. And yeah. something that 
you didn't want to do. So, yeah, 40 years was enough. Okay. Um Um, well, I want to take a moment, if you will allow me, just to talk about your beautiful family. Um, you are born uh, Marva Franklin. Uh, today, everybody knows you as Marva Anglin. Mm -hmm. um, and so, and uh, with my Uncle Bobby, your husband, you had a couple of sons. Um, I'm not going to say nasty things about my cousins. They're <laughs> wonderful men. Oh, they're such great men now. Uh, both married to beautiful women. Um, you have beautiful, accomplished grandchildren. In fact, uh, one of your grandchildren just started her teaching career. Yes. Um, not too far away from you. And I'm so, so proud of that. Right. Um, uh, is there anything else that you would want to talk about, you know, with regard to your, you know, your family and what you built there, um, I guess, in Grosbeck and in Mejia? Well, uh, not too much. I just uh, worked 24 years in Grosbeck and then 13 in Mejia. And plus, uh, Kennard and Tomball. So it all equaled out to 40 years. So wow. that, that was plenty for me. So yeah. I didn't go back to sub anything. They asked okay. me, was I? <laughs> and I told them, no, ma'am. Yeah. So what have you done in retirement? What's retirement like for you? Did I hear you were at the library for a bit or maybe I made that up? Museum. 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 We have, it's a school museum here in my head. So I worked with them. And okay. at one time I was exercising, but I was driving to Fairfield. And that got old, so yeah. I yeah, need yeah, to yeah. find a, another place to go to exercise. Oh, so hey, Mama, I'm busy you... every day doing yeah. something I can't do like I used to. But And what are some things that you picked up in Tadmore? I mean, you know, this might be a little off the wall to ask, but um, for I, I know that you are in my mind you live like on a farm almost, you know, I, I think of your property as like, you know, a true homestead with, you know, you guys, I don't know if you got, ever had cattle. Um, yes. Yeah. You That's know, but what, yeah, we have cattle. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. So you live on a farm. Yeah. Uh, and you know, do you have a garden? You know, do, no, does any I of the Tadmo stuff garden, come yet. Okay. <laughs> okay. I said I I might try my hand at a garden this year. You all have inspired me. Uh, yeah. This idea of, you know, growing your own food and not necessarily having to be so dependent on the grocery store. Yes. Uh, I think is really cool. It's now, also hot and dry. Uh, yes. The planet is hotter. You know, yeah. there are droughts. <laughs> a quarter yeah. of the planet right now is affected by droughts. So I, I need to learn new farming. Yes. Uh, but... You know, Aunt Mava, you guys, I don't know what else to say, but great job. You guys so you, have. Yeah, and I know you know that during the summers, I used to come back home and Mama and I would can a, a lot. We did a lot of canning of peas. You know what? <laughs> I'm supposed to ask you about tomato preserves. <laughs> My dad said, ask Mava about tomato preserves, get the recipe, you know. Well, uh, Mama made tomato preserves, and mm -hmm. I would just, they are Rhonda, you know, observing how she did it. But uh, she didn't have, you know, she didn't have a recipe. Nobody did. You know, I'm no. listening to a book right now by one of my favorite writers. His name is uh, Michael Harriet. Uh -huh. And he talks about the history of soul food and soul food recipes. 
and yes. how so much of what was created was never written down. It right. used to be illegal for black people to read and write. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, it was some of this, some of that. Right. You know, like, right. And I think that's how uh, my mother's mother cooked. You know, a lot of the really fantastic food yes. didn't have a recipe. That's you true. Know, they, they cooked right. on instinct. Yeah. Uh, but Amava, I know you learned it by osmosis. It's in you. You just <laughs> you just have to get in the kitchen. Yeah. Get in the kitchen <laughs> and measure and, and you know, to write a recipe, measure yeah. our things, you know, yeah. and, and add and write down how much I put of what. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, Mava, listen. Maybe one of these days, uh, if I find myself with some time, I'll come up there and we'll we will figure it out. <laughs> okay. We will figure yeah. out some tomato <laughs> preserves. Yes. Okay. Yes. Well, um, thank you so much for talking to me, Aunt Mava. Um, this is for me. This has been you a true well. treat. Um, yes. learning about our family's history in Houston County and, you know, kind of what happens later. Yes. Um, well, and, and, you know, maybe, like I said, hopefully one day soon we'll all uh, get to be together. Uh, yes. And just kind of continue the discussion. Okay. All okay. right, then. I love I you. I enjoyed it. I love you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye-bye.